This city started out at a population of just over 40,000. By the end of this video, this city will quadruple in size and have a population over 160,000. My original intention of this video was to be the final episode of this series, but... I want to know from you if you would like me to continue this series and improve the city of Bridgerton. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to find out how you can get your name into this city. I'll give you a hint. You need to be subscribed, so you should definitely do that. The city of Bridgerton currently sits at 40,000 people. Not a small town, but not a large city either. In order for a city to grow, infrastructure needs to accommodate the growth. Fortunately, all of the major roads have already been laid out in the previous episode. All that remains are the local road networks for each area. I'll be 100% transparent with you. I didn't have much time to build this, but this video has been in the works for weeks. I spent nearly 15 hours just recording and building everything, and it's all going to be compressed into probably a 10 minute video or less. That doesn't include voiceovers, cinematic shots, editing, etc. All in all, this video will probably take a grand total of 25 hours to complete, so I really hope you enjoy it. I know Shukabo would tell me those are rookie numbers, but let's be real here. Modest City Skylines should be much quicker than Vanilla City Skylines with the quality of life improvements that mod provide. If I did the same thing in vanilla, it probably would have taken me a total of 85 hours to make this. Now that my long rant is over, let's explode the population. I'm trying out a different editing style for this. Let me know if you like this or if it's too distracting. For most of the city, I built out in the easily buildable areas with a ton of residential and provided commercial and offices where needed. the outskirts of town, I wanted to capture a rural feeling, so I built houses much further apart. I did not have time to detail anything at all, which is a shame, but I would love to keep building in this city and improving upon what has been built. back towards the center of the city, I tried my best to avoid showing you a certain part of the city as I wanted to have a big reveal later on in this video. As we get to the industrial section, a ton of warehouses have come up along with all the unique factories available in game. The ore and oil industry has also been built up to 5 stars and the city of Bridgerton is profiting immensely off of these industries. The city expanded so much that the airport also expanded for an additional two more runways. There's technically two different airports here, but we will get back to that later. As we approach the sea, we can see the development starting to thin out. I had also planned an amusement park along the beach, but I hadn't had the chance to get to that yet. Most of this area is residential, which allowed the city to have such an extreme population boom. Even with the addition of all the houses, the population didn't get to 160,000, so what gives? Did I lie? No, well, you just need to keep watching the video. Next, let's jump into the industries that we passed by. I had Unlock All on, as I'm sure you have seen hundreds of videos on how to unlock each of the industries buildings, so why do I need to rehash what you've already seen? My only goal is to build 5 star industries, and provide enough resources for the unique factories to constantly produce more products.
I also built out the oil industry and quickly learned that oil industry really clogs up the road, so I wound up expanding roads to help curb traffic. Just ask Houston, Texas how that's working for them. Just one more lane, they say. One. More. Lane. Fortunately, it worked well enough for what we need. I didn't expect perfect traffic, but as long as it's not gridlocked, I'm good with it. I also added a ton of warehouses to store literally everything we produce. <laughs> After that, I went unique factory crazy and placed down every single unique factory in the game. These are huge buildings and were very hard to fit in places. I literally carved out a hill to place some of these huge buildings. Now let's expand the airport quite a bit. I decided to go with the ultra modern large terminal as I've never used it before and I wanted to give it a shot. I had to move the railroad line underground sooner so I could get the runways at the distances that I wanted of at least 200 units. Two more runways were added to accommodate additional passengers. I noticed an empty space on the other side of the runways and decided to expand the terminal over to this area with the only connection being metro. This allowed the airport to have huge capacity for airplanes as the concourse was fairly large. With the runway out of the way, it was time to provide plenty of parking for the airport.
wanted to keep the layers separate, so the upper layer I intended for drop-offs and pickups only, while the lower layer would allow for vehicles to stay for extended periods. I added a few additional amenities to the airport for a little bit of a nicer look, but let's be real, it's extremely difficult to detail an airport accurately, as most of it is concrete and ditches for water runoff. I absolutely love it when parking lots are full in this game, because it means you did it right. Now, it's time for that part of the video I've been hiding from you this entire time. It's time to build downtown. I downloaded quite a few tower assets to include with the city. I took some time to lay out how I wanted my skyline to look, making sure to include the freeway as a split down the middle. I also was able to sneak a city gate between a couple of towers and I think that looks really cool. I tried my best to stagger the heights in all directions so the skyline looks natural. Once I was satisfied with all the buildings that I could control, including using ploppable Rico, I let zoning take care of the rest. I used a combination of styles such as IT cluster for offices and green cities as well as vanilla for residential. Nearby downtown, I dedicated an area for a ton of stadiums. These stadiums could be used for a multitude of purposes, but it allowed the city to have professional sports teams while also allowing the colleges to utilize these fields as well.
Once I've placed every building down that I wanted, as well as the parking lots for the stadium, it was time to fill in the rest of the areas using zoned buildings. I had to use a high rise ban on this portion of the downtown area as a runway faced towards these buildings. Fortunately, planes clear these buildings easily so there shouldn't be any concern of a plane crashing into a residential complex. Let me know what you think of the skyline. I think it looks very natural and has a nice transition with a couple exceptions. Now that the population has hit 160,000 with the addition of downtown, see, I didn't lie to you. Let me know if you'd like to see more Bridgerton, as there is still a ton I could do to add to the city, especially now that there's an updated 81 tiles mod that I'm using. Would you like to have your name in this city forever? All you have to do is subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below telling me you'd like to have your name in Bridgerton. I will show your name in the city in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Click on screen to watch the humble beginnings of Bridgerton and see how the city has transformed to what it is today.